Hey everybody, it's me, and I'm stuck in my little car still. <laughs> I'm painting this exterior, you can probably tell I got freaking paint all over me. I'm spraying a stucco body all day, and um, I can't very well do this on the job when I'm outdoors. <laughs> There's no privacy at all. <laughs> In fact, I'm liable to be rousted by a neighbor. I was just—I just parked on the street, and a little, <laughs> little lady came and stood on her porch, staring at me until I moved. So I just knocked down a hot dog, hot dog and I'm having a few sips on my big gulp, as you can see here. I've got the air conditioner on, so you'll probably hear that it's freaking hot outside. And uh, uh, by way of Philosophy Friday. Um, I'm going to get into just a wee little bit. I'm mixing up philosophy and, and politics this week. Um, but uh, I, a friend of mine, Garrett Swain, wrote in on a post. I have these really crappy sunglasses on. These are my, these are my spraying sunglasses, not the attractive ones you're used to seeing me in. So screw it. Deal with it. Um, I had uh, posted something. Uh, uh, we were... Uh, Started a discussion about what are the intrinsic values differences between um, between uh, conservatives and Democrats, and I had, had posted, or, or conservatives and liberals, Democrats, Republicans, um, and I had posted this great story that I found that it was a pretty good breakdown. It was a little tilted. You could tell the person who wrote it was a little more friendly to leftism than uh, than the right wing, uh, but in general got it right. Yeah, and so I posted that, and then uh, Garrett, buddy of mine, came in and said. Uh, Really, it's it could also be viewed as the difference between one one party um, uh, emphasizes cooperation and the other side emphasizes competition. And um, I had been thinking about that all week, um, and so it was it was interesting that he brought that up, which I, I think is a great point, um, and credit him with that. But I'd also actually been thinking about it all week and coming to the conclusion that we are. Um, a, both a cooperative and a competitive species. We compete for resources naturally. We must. But we also must cooperate because no human ever could make it uh, on his own. We don't have, uh, you know, great big talons. We don't have explosive cheetah-like speed and, and fangs, you know, flesh-ripping fangs. We have, we are basically fruit eaters. And in order to have come this far and become the, you know, the owners of this planet, the great omni or the great adapter that we are, we had to be hugely interactive to do that. So we are naturally cooperative as well. Um, and I think the, one of the reasons that people, uh, they get upset about um, capitalism, they think capitalism is based on competition. And I think capitalism is based on cooperation and competition. And let me give you a couple of quick examples. Um, say I run a restaurant. I have to, I, I have to serve food that is liked by my customer. I have to give them service that makes them feel served. Um, I have to create an environment that they want to come to, and I got to bring it in at a price that's friendly to them. So I have cooperated with their tastes, their uh, sense of self, in the way that I've treated them. I have cooperated with their budget. I've cooperated with with everything in order to win their business. Now I've out if I've out, outdone that to the guy across the street, then um, I'm competing with him successfully. But I'm only competing successfully in a free market situation if I am more cooperative than he is with the needs and desires of my customer base. So it's hugely cooperative. Um, you know, if, if I have, a, a, you know, the, say online clothing stores, right? Um, you've got. Um, you know Eddie Bauer, they're cooperating with a with a certain sense of style. You've got, say, you've got Walmart.com. They're cooperating again with a budget. Um, you know, uh, say um, Victoria's Secret. They're cooperating with the male libido and the visual aspect, and the women who understand that and want to get an effect out of that. It's all cooperation, and we tend to not notice cooperation as much as we notice competition because we are surrounded by competition at all times. You know, I got on the freeway today and drove down here. It, took me, it takes me about an hour and a half to get here in the morning. 
Um, it's a long, long drive. Um, but anyway, uh, you you notice uh, to a high degree if somebody cuts you off and you think, oh, God, God damn it, people can't drive. Well, you don't notice the hundreds and hundreds of people who have let you in, who have yielded to you, who have not run into you, all the ways in which people have cooperated flawlessly with you. You don't notice that because it doesn't make um, a great big impression. You notice the stuff that's traumatic. And you notice the, you know, if, if somebody is competing with you and beating you out in business, you think, God, this damn capitalism, it's so competitive. But, you know, the guys with the restaurants, they never see each other unless they stand out front, wave at each other in the building. You don't, you, you know, they don't, you know, in order to win the customer, you don't run over there and take them from the other business. You simply attract them. You have to be more attuned to your customer than is the other guy. And that's cooperation. That's all that that is. So uh, for the people who believe that, that, um, that we are, uh, uh, we should be a more cooperative society and therefore stop competing with one another. We should let all the little kids win, you know, the, the prize and de-emphasize competition and, and super emphasize cooperation. I'm saying you're just, you, you're only saying that because you've got your eyes closed to the fact that we are cooperating constantly. I mean, look at where I'm parked. I'm parked in this just typical little neighborhood. You know, it's just, it, it just couldn't be more typical I'm over in Arcadia California and not in the not in the high end a part of it but you look down the street here and everybody has agreed to mow their lawns everybody's agreed to have uh, shade to park their cars properly there goes a little squirrel up the tree uh, you know is, isn't that uh, isn't this just a um, where, where am I where's my squirrel uh, where's my I'm not seeing him <laughs> but anyway um, uh, uh, it, it, everybody does that without really a thought. No, nobody fights that. Everyone's in square little boxes. Everybody is is agreeing to these social contracts that nobody ever signed a, a, their name to. We do it because we think we ought to. We do it because we know our lives will be better. We do it in order to get the things we need. So we compete these days against the environment for resources by being efficiently cooperative in whatever way that it is. I'll go back to work here in a couple of minutes and uh, continue working for the folks there. Um, and I don't really know these people. I met them two weeks ago or three weeks ago when I came to bid the house. And now um, I know them a little bit on Facebook. I know her on Facebook, but, um, but really I don't know them. And I've got a key to their house in my pocket. Um, also, I've got two weeks of work there and I haven't taken any money. They've offered it, but I didn't take any. So I've trusted them to not screw me over. They've trusted me to not steal from them, not hurt their property in any way. It's all, you know, because they know that this, that, that all my life I have been practicing cooperation in the same way that they have. So it doesn't seem a stretch to them. If, it, if we were really a competitive cutthroat society, as some people would like to think we are, nobody would trust each other like that. But we trust each other like that all the time. And it's not because we have particular insights. It's because it's a good bet. Everybody is doing it way, way more often than they are competing with each other. And so uh, I, I just want to put that out to, to say that um, the idea that the free market economy or capitalism in, in any way is primarily a competitive force is nonsense. So anyway, that really doesn't qualify as philosophy. But ha tell, tell you what, stick with me. Next Friday, I will tell you the meaning of life. I'll tell you the purpose of life. I can't tell you the meaning of life because it has no objective meaning. But I can tell you the purpose of life. So stay tuned. Next Friday, purpose of life. That'll make up for the fact that this is really almost more political than anything else. If you like what I'm saying, subscribe to my channel. And, uh, and you know, soon perhaps I'll be out of this damn little car. I'll be back in my truck if I can get, can get, uh, uh, if I can get a job a little closer to home. It's, I can afford to not... I don't go broke when I... I drive all the, the gear in and unload it, and then I drive, commute back and forth in the tiny little car. So that's why I'm stuck in this little car right now. Okay, anyway, if you like what I'm saying, subscribe to the channel, like, share.